Hi, my name is George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, I'll be showing you how to put watermarks on your photographs. Several different techniques, several different tricks, and I think you're going to really enjoy this one. If you like the video, make sure you click that thumbs up, like button, and also subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's get to it. Adding a watermark onto your photographs is really pretty easy here in Photoshop Elements. We'll be looking at a few things. First, a white watermark like that, a black watermark, which of course is useful if you're on a light background. Let me just move that one here so you can see that. So there you go. On a light background, you want to have both of those. Or you might want to have something like this sample on your image. Or you also might want to have this kind of an effect on your image. Let's look at how you do all of these. Now starting off with the logo. Now this can be anything you want. It can be a logo that you have for your company or it can be a signature if you want to. You know whatever you want. The important thing here is that it is one solid color on a transparent background. Let me show you how I made this real fast so you can see how that's done if you want to make a, a new logo. That was simply made using some graphics in here. Let's bring up the graphic menu. There we are. I'm in graphics and I'm looking at shapes in graphics. Let's just scroll down just a little bit. And I just use this thing right there, just a big bullseye, which makes it real easy. Now, on the bullseye, we'll go back to our layers. It comes in as a new layer. You can see right down there. You'll need to right click on the name and choose simplify layer. Now, we can zoom in on that and then using the magic wand I can click on that center get rid of that and click on the next ring out get rid of that and then let's just deselect and that gives us that ring there's the ring shape as a ring shape on a transparent background already done for you let's now put in some text here's my type I have this set at Arial black it's just a good thick typeface set it centered and I'll just click in the middle here someplace then just type in logo this could be your company name you know whatever you want now this came in as white text that's what I last used in here so let's select that come down to color and change this over to black there we go so there's the black text and then if you grab the corner of that you can stretch that out and make it fit inside of that circle so again, you know, this can be anything you want. If you have a scanner, you can do your signature. Just do it good and thick, you know, a thick pen. Do your signature, scan that in. And the same thing, you can just get rid of the background, the white background, by deleting the white background with the magic wand, and that leaves you with just the signature on a clear background. So however you manage to get that together, that's your first step. Now, on here we have this as two layers. I want to have this as just one layer. So right-click where it says Logo up here and we're going to come down and simplify the layer. Now hold down the control key, click on shape, so these are both selected. Right click and merge layers. So they're now in just one layer and there you go. Okay, let's back out a little bit on this page here. I think I will fit the screen. There we go. Now it's too big, so I'm going to drag it down here about where I want it and then I'll grab the corner and I'll pull it down until it's about the size that I want just like that. So there we go, there's that logo on that side. Now obviously it's a dark background and a dark logo. I want to have that reversed. So let's see how that's done. I'm going to zoom in on that so it's easier to see what we're doing down here. Just bring this up good and large. There we go, so there's the logo. Nice, nice dark logo, dark background, not too good. So I'm going to rename this one. Let's put this at the back end here so it's easy to see. So I'll call it one logo black. That's one of the ones you want. If you have a light background you want to have a black logo. Let's grab this, drag it up to the new layer button. Here's your copy of that. Let's hide the first one. So here's our copy. We now need to change this into white. Easy to do. Go up to the enhance menu, come down to color, choose hue saturation. Here we are. And then just take the lightness control and push it all the way to the right. And there's your white logo choose OK. I can now rename this, double click where the name is, 
and let's just rename this white. Okay, so far so good. We have a black logo and a white logo. Now, let's take these and we're going to save these as files. So I'm going to just do this with the black logo. Hold down the control key again, click on the icon on the picture side of the layer, and that selects just that logo. Then do edit copy. There we go. And I can deselect that. Now go up here to File and New Blank File. And the first option you'll get is Document Type Clipboard. And this is sized at the size of what you just copied. So let's go ahead and choose OK. So there we go. There's that new file. And then Edit Paste. And there's the logo inside of that new file. Now it has a white background. Let's just hide the white background. And now we have this as a Photoshop file. So let's save this one. File Save. And I'm going to call this one Logo Black. Actually, I already have that up there in my example. So I'll call it Black Logo. There we go. Black Logo. Choose Save. Let's now save this again. File Save As. And we'll change black to white. So it's now white logo and save. Okay, now let's change this back over to white again. Same thing, enhance, adjust color, hue, saturation, grab the lightness control, move it all the way to the right, and you get a white logo. If you had a white logo to begin with, just move it to the left and you get a black logo. Choose OK. And then file, save. All right, so this is our first kind of logo. Let's take a look at how this works. Let's close that out. Let's go over here. Here's another picture. A white logo will work out nicely on this one. So I'm just going to place that file. So here's the pictures open. Go up to File, come down to Place. And I've got that hiding in here somewhere. There's the black logo. Let's come down here. There's the white logo right there. Choose Place. There it is right in the middle of the page. Let's just drag that down here, bottom right corner. And there's your logo. Okay, let's say you want to have this a little bit transparent. Easy to do. Just go over here to Opacity on your layers and change that Opacity to 50%. And there's a really nice, neat, cool kind of see-through logo on your image. Okay, that's the first one. Easy to do, as you can see. All you have to do is just place your file. If you, need a, if you have a light background, place the black one. If you have a black or a dark background, place the white one and you're all set to go. You can change the opacity to whatever you want to give the effect that you want on that. All right, let's get this back on fit on screen. So there's that logo. Okay, let's go another step. Let's go up here to File and Open. Now for this one, we need the black logo. So I'll use that one right there, black logo, choose Open. There it is. Now on this one, go up to Edit, come down to Define Brush, and you can then give this thing a name. I'll just leave the name as the name of the file, which is fine, blacklogo.psd, and choose OK. So I now save this as a brush. Let's see how that works. Let's go to our brushes, and let's come down to the brush right down here, and you'll see at the very, very bottom of your brush list right there, there is that logo brush, just sitting right there. I can now take this, and I'll choose a white brush color, and I'll just tap on the page. Oh, let me make sure I'm on the... Get it here. There we go. Just tap on the picture and there you go. There is that logo just applied as a brush. Just click once or tap once and it applies it as a brush. Now you want to have this as a full hard effect on that. Very important. That's full hard effect. You can check your brush settings on this. Make sure that your hardness is just fine like that. That should be just fine. It'll be 100% if it's not accessible like that. Let's say you wanted to have this come in as a 50%. I'll go up here and let's make a new layer. Click on the new layer and then just set the opacity to 50% and there's your transparent logo. So it, with this brush it just comes in as a stamp and simply stamp it on. And You can place your logo anywhere you want on your picture. So that's the second way to do this. You know, make your logo, save it as a file. It has to be a black image. And then save that, saves as a brush. And then you can just stamp it on. Makes it real easy, you always have that. Now if you do this, 
make sure you save your brush set because the default could easily revert back to its default settings and you'll lose that brush in there. Notice so how it just uh, disappeared right down there. So you don't want to have that happen, have it just revert back to the default settings like I just did. So I want to bring that brush back in and then save that, that brush set. Let's go ahead and do that one. So I'll bring the file back up again. So file and recent. There it is. Go back up here to edit. Come down to define brush again. And it's back at the bottom of your sit. Now before you do anything else in here, if you want to save this, go up to the little icon right there. Click on that and choose save brush or save brush as it saves the whole set. Let's go ahead and just choose save brush. Give it a name. There we go. That brush is now saved in my set. You see right there. There it is. This is the one they had temporary down below. And here it's now saved in that set. Now if you still want to make sure you absolutely keep this in your default brushes, let's save our default brushes as well. Let's click in here. Save brushes. And then this will put you into the brushes category. You can put it anywhere you want to really. I'll just put it right here. That's my my brushes save set. I'm just going to put down here watermark brushes and choose save. That's now saved in that set. So if I go over here to my default brushes, change to assorted brushes, go back to default brushes, notice how it's gone again. So I need to find that one that I just saved. So I'll go over here, this little icon, come down to load brushes. And again, I have mine saved in a folder here. I guess it's called Photoshop brushes. And if I scroll down, I should be able to find that saved brush set. There it is right there. Click on that. Choose load. It then loads in that new brush set. This will still say default up here. Ignore that. And there's the saved brush right at the bottom of that saved set. You can also find this down here if you not only only shows so many have a couple of custom brushes already, but it'll if you're it's the first time you're doing it, you'll have it showing up down here as well. It only will give you two additional though, unfortunately. But again, easy to do. If you want to go back to your default settings, just reset brushes. You're back to your standard set in there. And one more time to load your saved set. Click on that, load brushes. Wherever you saved it is fine. Just choose that brush set and load. And you're back to the set that has that specialty brush in it. Okay, so that's the next way to do a logo. You know, depending on how often you use your logo, you know, one way or the other might be easier to use. If you do logos all the time, I'd save it as a brush set then to stamp it on. If you're only using it occasionally, then just go ahead and save it as a file and then place the file like we did previously. Okay, let's just hide all of that stuff. I'm going to reset this picture actually. Let's go up here to edit and we're going to revert right there. Goes back to the original saved version. The last saved version rather. Okay, now that's one. Let's fit back on screen again. I'll hide that. That takes care of our, our basic logo. Let's say now you wanted to have sample in the middle of your page like this. This is easy to do. I'll just grab the type tool. I'm still using the Arial Black and I'll just type sample in the middle here. I'll do it all caps. Choose OK, and then let's grab the corner and stretch that out so it's good and large. Come just outside the corner, little look kind of curved arrow. I can then spin that around, put it kind of in the middle, save that, and then let's just adjust that opacity. I'll put it to 50%, which works out pretty nicely. So there we go. That's now just a big sample on your picture. Real nice, easy to do. As you can see, there just took moments to do that. Nice way just to protect your picture if you wanted to send this or show it to somebody, but you didn't want them using the picture. That's an easy way to do it. Okay, last little trick. Let's just get rid of that, and I'll hide that. There we are. Last little trick in here. Let's say you wanted to do this kind of an effect. Also real easy to do. Let me show you how that's done. What is with a new file? Go up here to File, New, Blank File, and I'll set this at... 200 width and 200 height. Choose OK. There we go. A little blank file here. Back to our type tool. Leaving all those settings the same. I'm just going to click in the middle here and again type in sample in all caps. Let's hide the background. 
there you go you can now see that sample right there I'll take my cursor right to the corner here and let's just spin this around a little bit there we go I can now stretch the corner out and get this as large as I can there it goes this kind of fits it inside of that square so I now have sample in here and I have my square and the transparent background because the background is hidden let's now say this is a pattern go up to edit come down to define pattern and I'll call this one sample 2 since I already have sample in there before so sample 2 choose OK that's now saved as a pattern so all I have to do is make a new layer above my picture go over here to the paint bucket and then you'll find the sample right there in your patterns in the default set of your patterns and all you have to do is just come in here and fill and it fills that layer with that pattern gives that sample clear across the whole picture like that and if you want that a little more subtle just come in and change the opacity to 50 percent or something and there you go there's how you can stamp or watermark your picture with sample all over it or anything you want to write on there you know whatever you use is fine there you go that's the last way of doing that so several ways of applying watermarks onto your photo last little thing if you want to make sure you don't lose this one simply save your pattern right here as we saw previously where you go ahead and you the you know, same trick the same technique as saving brushes exact same idea here we're saving your patterns okay there it is that's how you can apply watermarks on your page three types there's your over the whole picture watermark done as a pattern there's sample just done as a layer right there here's the black logo there's the logo in white again you can change your opacity to whatever you want 50 percent right down there and of course we also have the logo saved as a brush as well Come over here to our brushes and we should still have that same set shown there it is choose your brush and then just stamp that on let me just put a new layer in here there we go stamp that on and there's your logo coming in as a stamp just do it on a new layer so you can hide it or show it or move it around whatever else you want to do with that all right there you go that's how to apply watermarks onto a photograph inside of Photoshop elements thank you for watching my video I hope you found it useful if you like this video click on the like button below to let others know you can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future I'm frequently uploading new training videos don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com